I've gotten so many questions lately about like, do I do my book release? Do I still release my book or should I cancel it or postpone it? And do I do this event or do I cancel that? And how do you write when you feel this way? And when everything like this is going on, how do you sit down and, and write? I don't know how to talk about this. Okay. There's a lot going on guys, I get it. I was not gonna make this video. In fact, I was avoiding it at all costs. And then I was like, I keep getting asked the same questions and I feel like there's gotta be somebody out there who's encouraging people instead of stirring up fear. And so I wanna be that encouragement today. I wanna give you guys some examples of how we can get through this first of all and then instead of searching for the worst possible things and thinking of all the things that could go wrong let's spend some time thinking about all the things that we do have control over because number one we have control over our own thoughts and i have thoughts on why now is a fantastic time to release a book i have thoughts on ways to do bookish events and make releases amazing through a lot of our online opportunities that i'll talk about and i also have some thoughts on how to write through the crazy emotions and how to get other things done too because i'll be honest with you guys like super honest moment right now um i have gotten like no work done for days i have been struggling to get stuff done and to continue to work not because there's not stuff to do i have so many amazing opportunities and things that i want to do but the past few days in particular have gotten really intense emotionally and so I guess we'll just start with that. The first thing that has been helping me is that if you get into this, um, I actually just watched a video by Heart Breathings, I'll link it below, where Sarah talks about how anxiety can spiral. And so that's a really good image for me to picture like I'm on this, I'm just going in circles. I'm literally spiraling, I'm following the same train of thought around and around and around and around. And the best way to stop is to get off that spiral like think of it like this way if you were in um, a negative situation physically like in a room with somebody who is unstable you would get out so it follows to reason that if you are in a mental room where it's kind of unstable in there the best thing you could do is get out of that headspace and get yourself in a different headspace like just get out of the room mentally if that makes sense sometimes for me this has looked like watching netflix but i also have this desire to go on a reading kick and kind of just escape because reading was always an awesome escape for me i think people used to make fun of me for that and i don't care it's amazing it's a wonderful escape now more than ever and so thinking of one of the ways to really change my perspective is to spend some time in another headspace and if for you it happens to be that writing your story is that other headspace and that other mental room then awesome you are ahead of the game but sometimes it's not and there's nothing wrong with that i think we all have this thing called writer's guilt sometimes or most people do i don't know if everybody does but comment below if you've had this before where you feel guilty not writing and not moving your dreams forward because you know where you want to be and you know what you have to do to get there and so you feel like you should be doing that all the time and i definitely feel that way maybe that's just me and so <laughs> it's so like guilt ridden to sit there and not be moving forward but i feel like giving yourself the permission to step away and be like actually i need to take care of myself and i need to spend time with family and friends or whatever else you need to do in this time giving yourself that permission to step away for a bit and removing the writer's guilt when you do so can free you up when you come back to writing and i think it can again it's emotions are chaotic especially in a time like this but in general too and so if you are in a weird space emotionally writing is hard and so you can just acknowledge that and just be like this is how it is it's a little bit harder right now that's okay like honestly it's that simple it is to just start giving yourself grace when you're feeling all these emotions just give yourself grace and figure out also like take the time to explore what is the root of why you don't want to write and is it is it all these emotions then let yourself take time away and if it's something else like i have a video um i'll link it below about the root of writer's block because sometimes the root is like perfectionism and other things that hold us back there's so many things that hold us back and so first of all finding out the root of it and figuring out like is this something that i can tackle or is it something that i i need to step away from for a bit and that's how i tackle it so that's where i am personally with 
like writing during this time and figuring it out. Let's talk about book releases for a minute because I know not everybody is going to have a book release. Like that's probably the minority of people watching this, but I still feel like I need to speak to that. And for those of you who don't have a release coming up, it might be good for you to know that this is a fear that authors are dealing with and that they are, you know, worrying about sales during this time and not sure what to do. And so maybe if you don't have a book release coming out in the next couple months, the best thing you can do is support the authors who do have that. And even if it's just buying an ebook for a couple bucks or um, just attending their events live, you know, the live streams, we'll talk about that. Uh, if you do have a release, I wanted to encourage you not to cancel it. I know that sounds weird, but here is a very encouraging thing that I actually was seeing a couple authors talk about on Facebook. And they were saying that, look at 2008 and the economy then and how there were all these, you know, more expensive things to do, like the sporting events and the concerts and the movie theater and all that, that people didn't want to spend money on because of the economy. And so instead they were reading books and book sales were great during that time. And so now put Corona in the mix and it's like 10 times as unlikely that people are gonna go out to these expensive places. They're not gonna go to concerts right now. They're not doing the movie theater. They're not doing anything with a large group right now. And because of that, we have, you know, the TV and we have books. And so I personally think that more people are gonna be reading. They're gonna be at home. They've got their TBR list to get through and they're gonna be reading even more. So I actually think that uh, releasing during this time period is not a bad idea at all. I think it could do really well. I think people could be really excited for you. And that leads into the whole um, how to do the release and the release events when you can't do them publicly and you can't have like a physical gathering. I also wanna encourage you guys that you can do online live streams I have done a bunch of book releases live at this point in my author career. The Stolen Kingdom was the most recent where I got to celebrate with four other authors, but none of us were actually physically in the same room. We used StreamYard, which is something you can use to do a YouTube live stream. And that's just one example of how I did a YouTube live stream to celebrate a book release. But I have done one with Mandy Lynn where we celebrated the release of our nonfiction book that we co-wrote together. I also did a YouTube live stream to celebrate the release of Pearl's number back in the day that was like my first YouTube live stream I think ever back when Google Hangouts was a thing and I even have I think here on YouTube I have a video that originally came from Instagram where I did an Instagram live stream and I put that onto YouTube after the fact so I will link all of these videos below so those are just some examples if you're looking for an idea of like different games you can play different ways you can do giveaways how you can bring co-hosts on with you and how you can just make it like a fun event but I also shared three tips over on Instagram back when I was like, I'm not doing a video. I'm not going to talk about it that much. I'm just going to do a quick thing on Instagram. <laughs> and uh, so I shared a story where I shared three tips. And the first tip was essentially to treat it like an actual party. And I get this tip, by the way, from my critique partner, Brittany Wang. She is always the one to say this is like treat online parties the way you would an actual party. So make sure you actually invite people. Like a one-on-one -on -one invitation is usually what gets people to a physical party too, right? Not a group message. So go out and take the time to invite people and get to know friends and be like, hey, I'm gonna have this party if you wanna come. And then remind them and then remind them again because people forget and that's true for any party. So why wouldn't it be true for an online party? My second tip that I shared in that Instagram story was that you need to have an incentive for people to come because uh just like with any other party like why should I be there why should I go and so some ways that you can have incentives are like I would do giveaways and you can do giveaways where it's free for you if you give a um ebook version of your book and you learn how to sell it how to sell it how to send it I will link my video below on how to send an arc copy to a kindle which is essentially sending an ebook to somebody's kindle and how to do that for free I'll link that below but you can totally use prizes like that. You can um, buy copies of your friends' books or ask them if they want to donate if you if you know them well enough. I wouldn't just ask anybody. That'd be really, really rude. You could 
use books that you already have or you could use other bookish items that people also enjoy like I have candles from Highland Bluff that I love to promote because I have a bunch of them and they are an amazing company and so things like that make great incentives but also games can make good incentives like if you know it would be fun for you to have a bunch of other authors on there and playing games or if you have a bunch of other authors who could give writing advice or authors who could talk about your story with you or even if you're by yourself, you can promise to talk about the story, give sneak peeks, behind the scenes, teasers, um, stories about how your writing process went, things like that are incentives. Like just tell people why they should come. Why should they come to your live stream? Make it exciting, make it interesting. And then my third tip was to test the equipment before you actually do the live stream because things go wrong, you guys, especially when you're brand new to live streaming. If you're gonna do like a YouTube live, um, you'll have to figure out StreamYard and get used to that. If you're gonna do Instagram Live, that can be kind of unique <laughs> and it's only like an hour and then they cut you off and you only get it for 24 hours. So there's things you gotta learn. So do your research and actually like learn and strategize and plan ahead so that you have uh, comfort with that technology and maybe so that you realize that it looks kind of awkward if you are sitting in your bed with your blanket over you and a pillow behind you. It looks kind of weird for like a hundred people to be watching you do that. And you're like, hey, maybe I should actually go sit in a more <laughs> like at my kitchen table or something like that. Or if you're doing, you know, a Facebook Live, maybe you find out that your internet connection isn't great and you need to do that at like someone else's house or I don't know if the coffee shop would let you do that. That'd be kind of weird. Maybe the library, but you get the idea, like test it out. So those are my top three tips for how to host an online event. But you guys, you get the idea, it's so, it's so much fun. Like you can still have an absolute blast without any worry of contagion at all. You're all in your own homes. You're all, you know, completely safe and you get to hang out still and still have that human interaction and connection live, which can be so amazing. And readers can still hang out with you and celebrate your book, both your book release or another bookish event, whatever you wanna do. I'm actually in conversation with Barnes and Noble right now because I actually have a book signing coming up this Saturday, March 21st, and I don't know if it'll happen anymore. I want it to happen, and at the same time, I, I don't want people to be afraid, and so I'm looking into things like a virtual signing. Okay, I just need to pop in as I'm editing and let you guys know that it is officially canceled. The Barnes & Noble signing is not happening. We are going to reschedule, and I talked to them about this idea of doing a virtual signing, and so I am gonna go there, and I'm gonna sign a bunch of stock for them, and I am going to put the phone number for the Blaine store right here, Blaine Barnes & Noble in Minnesota, and I would really appreciate it if you guys want a signed copy of The Stolen Kingdom or The Ginny Key, this is the only place you can get them right now and it would really help out this store and it would really help me out. So if you've been wanting a copy and you want to support a really awesome store, definitely give them a call. And as long as they have stock of signed copies, you can get one. Okay, back to the video. And this is something you could do from home as well. If you have book stock at home or if you want to buy a small number of books and do a virtual signing, you can make that happen as an author. Like you don't have to wait for somebody else to tell you how to do this. Look for the opportunities that are available to you online that you can do, the things that you can do instead of the things that you can't do. I think that's really a really, really helpful mindset to have in this time period is look for what we can accomplish because the truth is, I'm just gonna be real with you guys, the online space probably has more opportunities right now than anywhere else. And so just take advantage of all the opportunities that you have at your fingertips. I really hope this video has encouraged you in some way, even if it just helps one person, that's enough for me, honestly, because I just, I just know there's somebody out there who's been stressing over their book release or an event or having trouble writing their book and needed to hear this. I know that it helps me to talk about it. <laughs> so if you have encouragement, I would love to make this a space for encouragement. If you want to leave encouragement in the comments, things that you have heard that have actually been like good things that have helped people. And I hope it's okay that I share this with you guys that I personally feel like this time has shown a light on something that has always been true, which is that we are not in control and we don't have control over a lot of things. And for me personally, in my faith, I believe that God is in control. And I have shared this verse on my Instagram, Psalm 91, but if you wanna read it and check it out, I definitely encourage you guys to. And again, I hope it's okay with you guys that I share this, but this has been really encouraging to me. So I'm also going to link below 
my church and the last sermon that my pastor did where he talked about peace and how to handle this time. And so I'm going to link that below for anybody who's interested. No pressure, obviously, but I really think that somebody needs to hear it. Thank you for just hanging out with me in my kitchen and having a little chat about this. I... I could really use encouragement and I really, really want to be that encouragement for you guys. So thank you for being here. I hope you have an amazing day, an amazing week. I hope things start looking up for all of us. And I also hope that you continue to work on your books because the world needs your story. I'll talk to you guys again soon. Bye.